check it out, Joe. I hope you had some good times on the holidays and are ready for some more because Mystery Science Theater F1 has returned! Again! In order to warm up for 2016, there will be some classic episodes until the season starts, coupled with a preseason special just before Australia. But now let's change focus to the present. Or should I say, the past. In 1985, Alan Prost finally won his first title, and McLaren were still really good. Even though Niki Lauda sucked most of the time, and Michele Alboreto finally had a shot at the driver's title, but with Ferrari being how they are, he blew it. The Austrian Grand Prix was in a bit of a somber mood with the death of Ram driver Manfred Winkelhock just a week before. He was replaced by Kenny Aikson. Lauda announced that he was retiring at the end of the season, which pissed Ron Dennis off because he spent a shitload of money getting him back. The starting grade was Prost, Mansell, Lauda, Rosberg, Piquet, and Fabi. Senna was way down in 12th, and our beloved Martin Brundle didn't qualify. That took a while to spell out, didn't it? What a way to relax. A house in the fields, the tweet of the birds, turbocharged engines with 1000 horsepower. F1 has always been looking to the future. The 1985 Austrian Grand Prix is go when the McLaren duo and most of the front runners come out okay. Far away safe on a schmuzzle in the middle and 10 cars come up the hill, followed by survivors of the slaughter. Much like most drivers in the beginning of their careers, Gerhard Berger used to have the power of invisibility. Alboreto's time at Ferrari had its moments. Mostly low, but moments still. And because we don't have a giant hand to pick up the cars with, the red flag comes out. So what actually happened on that schmozzle was that Fabi and D'Angelo stoned in the middle of the grid, and Berger and Alboreto just couldn't avoid them and crashed. And that was it. Well, but, you know, the angles and such, you gotta entertain the people. Soon enough, we had our second start, and Kaki Rosberg, holy fuck! Shit! Damn, son! Oh, and uh, everyone else came out fine. The beautiful falls of Spielberg. Home crowds put a lot more pressure. A McLaren and a Williams fighting for the lead. Nowadays, not even in your dreams. The less you see, the better the race. Out of the Ockenwick curve comes Prost. There is Lauda in second place. A great roar from the patriotic Austrian crowd. I'm glad I could hear that over your incessant wobbling. Like father, like son, Rosberg can't keep it up. And Nicky Lauda, his McLaren of course, proudly carrying number one. He's the reigning world champion, currently in position number two. With the man carrying number two in position number one, because Prost leads, Lauda is second. In Formula One, two equals one, and ignorance is strength. And if you ignore the McLarens out in front, and you can't really do that... That's actually really easy. We do it to Mercedes all the time. There's Fabi in the Benetton-sponsored Tolman, on the tail of the ICI Honda Cannon-backed Williams, and there on the tail of the JPS Lotus. Hey, who changed the NASCAR? Having said that Lauda is willed on by the Austrian crowd, of course we mustn't forget the Italian crowd here, because there are an enormous number of Italians who've driven up over the border Plenty of Italian registered cars in the car parks, and they've all come, of course, to cheer on the Ferraris and to cheer on Alboreto. In other words, they're looking for disappointment. Damn it, Patrick, you blew it all to hell. Here he comes, bow down! The inconspicuous cut, the trait of a good editor. Andrea de Chateris is going head over heels. And with this little incident, I would like to introduce the possibly recurring newest segment on this series. Take it over, Jim. Why, yes, Matt, thank you! Hello everybody and welcome to Mystery Science Theater F1 Gymnastics, where your favorite flips and flops are judged and scored by a team of carefully selected critics. That team being me. Today we have a character we might see again in the future. Andrea de Cesaris! And you thought Maldonado was bad. A little slip can send it all to waste as our little companion demonstrates. A skip over the crest sends him up, doing a couple of side somersaults, finishing off with some pirouettes and a bit of a botched landing. For all of his efforts, I'll give our Italian chap a big round nine! Since this is our first presentation, he gets to be in the first for once! With nothing more left to say, it's back to our regular program. Prost is starting to feel Lauda's pressure. Nikki's beginning to speak Lauda. Theo Fabi's good run in the points ends as it always did. McLaren was slow in the pits even in 85. 
Though to be fair to them, they still used humans back then. Mansell's good fortunes laid far into the future. Meanwhile, Brabham lived down to its name, and Burger tried to show up on the cameras again. Pierluigi Martini sends out distress and goes, HOLY SHIT LAUDA'S OUT! I can't dance, I can't talk, only thing about me is the way that I walk. Prost and Senna would only get closer as the years went by. I mistakenly made it look like Fabi had retired earlier, but he conveniently nails the coffin here for me. Renault hasn't changed much over the years. They're not as dramatic as they used to be though. The fog of war makes its return. At the end of the day, Alan Prost wins with Ayrton Senna in second and Michele Boreto in third. Seems I was wrong about the disappointment. A short but entertaining race. I only really picked it because of the Chazis' flip. Um, it may have come out a little short, but that's because I only had less than an hour of footage to work with, so... I can only work with what I got, so I'm sorry about that. A new year means a new season, and as I said in the intro, there will be classics up until the start of the 2016 season, because it's going to be pretty tight this year, and I think you saw the calendar there. The calendar, the calendar. And yeah, it's not going to be very good to break in the middle. I'll return with the classics after the start of the season in the summer break. I hope, if I'm still making it the series until then. But anyway, I've talked too much. Thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you on the next race. They see me rolling, they hating, patrolling and trying to catch me riding dirty, 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 trying to catch me riding dirty.